In this video, I wanted to show you guys the importance of filtering on a switch mode power supply. So I'm working on a, another project that's cloning a Studer D19 mic valve that has transformer inputs and it has two tubes for the valve stage. The cool part about that circuit is that you can switch the valve stage in and out of the circuit. And when I first did this clone, every time I would switch the valve stage in, everything worked, but there was a significant amount of noise. So I wanted to track down that noise and see where it was coming from and see if I could do anything to get rid of it. So the plates are supplied by a switch mode power supply in the original design and in my clone. Um, I did try to make the original Studer power supply. It's a bit more complicated, some older, hard to find parts, and it ran really hot. I had to get some really big heat sinks. So it really just wasn't a, a good path forward, even though I got it working, the noise and the heat were kind of an issue. So what I did instead is I made a whole nother power supply board. See if we can get that in focus. And it looks like there's a lot going on, but there's a lot of um, smaller circuits that are essentially just duplicated. So this board can do our plus minus 15 volt rails for the ICs. We can do our plate voltages, which in this particular circuit is negative. So we go up to negative 250, 300 volts. And that's probably around, you know, a little bit less than 10 milliamps for each of those sub circuits. And then this can also do our heaters for the tubes. Um, we're running DC heaters at 12 volts, and those can pull up to 3 amps if you need it. And we also have our phantom power on here, so our plus 48 volts. Um, it's way over spec. It can do up to 250 milliamps, but it'll never get anywhere near that. And the cool part is all you need to send into this board is just um, 24 volts DC. So you can use just a standard uh, wall wart adapter that goes from the 120 at the wall to a nice clean 24 volts, but it needs to have a lot of current capability so that this board can deliver all the current that it promises. Um, this board works great, but I think I'm gonna need to do one more revision where for all the plate, um, the plate supplies, I need to add one more Pi filter. Um, so what is a Pi filter? Pi filter, we simply just call it that because it looks like the um, Greek letter Pi. So there's three components. And in this case, I'll be doing that top one there, which is a low pass. So it's also called a CLC filter. We start with an input capacitor and then we hit an inductor in the middle and then we end with another um, output capacitor there. You could also do a high pass variation if you wanted to where you flip the L's and the C's. Um, and then the cutoff frequency calculation there is the same for both of them. Um, but this is a great filter to use because at low frequencies that inductor is essentially just a straight wire. But as you go up in frequency, unlike a resistor that's going to keep the same resistance for all the different frequencies, this inductor is going to increase its impedance and act more like a resistor at higher frequencies. So if you have something that's going to draw a lot of current or you don't want it to heat up like a normal resistor filter, uh, like an RC filter, an inductor is a really great thing to choose here. So CLC filter is the way I'm going to go. But what I'd like to do is sort of prove to you that um, it is taking care of the noise issue. So what I did is I captured a bunch of different plots and we can go through those and look at both the temporal signal, the time domain signal, but more importantly, the um, frequency signal, the FFT, the Fast Fourier Transform. So my scope doesn't have the best sampling, but we'll start at um, one second divisions. So in this case, we're gonna have 10 seconds of data, but the sampling on my scope, I think this will probably top out around uh, two kilohertz for the Nyquist or so. So this is the noise floor of the oscilloscope. If I just connect the probe to its ground and I just take an acquisition, we can see it's really low. It's pretty much in the, the single millivolt range um, for that entire time scale. And then this is the noise profile with the CLC circuit in there. So we're about 10 times worse than that first noise floor. So we're in the like 10 millivolt range, um, top and bottom there. But then if we go down here, before we had that filter, we were pretty much, I don't know, plus or minus 500 millivolts, almost half a volt 
in just what looks like white noise, you know, and that's what it sounded like too when I would engage that valve stage. So those are the temporal signals, the time domain signals, but let's look at the spectrums. So if we start with just the oscilloscope, that's the, our noise floor. Um, the magnitude, that y-axis, it's relative, so don't think of it as like, you know, you're above zero dB noise. You can't think of it in the, the DAW or the digital space. Um, that scale is relative. So we'll compare everything to our noise floor here. So that's our absolute noise floor. And then without the CLC filter, we essentially have a huge bump in noise across the entire spectrum. So from DC all the way up to about, you know, 2.3 kilohertz, we've got probably 20 to 30 more dB in noise. And we also see this, um, these harmonics, right, from that periodic signal where there's stuff at 300 hertz and then 600 and then 900 and it just keeps going up there. Um, that amplitude kind of tails off just because the sampling of the scope tails off, but it would essentially continue on through the full frequency range. And then when we add the CLC filter, we now see that, yeah, there is, a, you know, an increase in noise at the low end. This is below 10 hertz, so that's not really an issue in terms of the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that we deal with in audio. Um, but this, more, this green trace more closely aligns with our noise floor as we get up, you know, around 200 hertz and further. There is a little bit of a bump in noise from 100 hertz on down, but... I think most of that's pretty normal. It could just be how I was holding the probe and it wasn't making good contact and there's some really low frequency rumble going on there. But yeah, that's a huge improvement. So if we look at orange to green here, we were up around, I don't know, 60 dB at that peak. And now we're well below minus 10, minus 20. So that's a huge cutoff in uh, relative noise. Another way to look at this is... Um, just capture those time signals at different divisions so that we have different scope sampling and we can see a different FFT. So in this case I'm doing the same thing but at 100 millisecond divisions and there's our noise floor, there's with the filter, and there's without the filter again and then we can look at the FFT and now our spectrum it's sort of nice because it goes from 1 Hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz what we'd be more familiar with in audio and we can totally see that the noise floor is fairly normal. Um, it starts to tail off at the high end there. Without the CLC filter, we've got this huge spike again in that 300 hertz region, and then it tails down towards the noise. And then as we add in that CLC filter, we're pretty much matching the noise floor, um, except for you know below 100 hertz, there's a little bit of a bump there. We can also compare this um, noise to like a typical uh, linear supply. So I do have an old Heath kit supply that can do the negative 300 volts. There's no switching going on in that supply, um, but there is the line voltage 60 hertz and 120 hertz harmonic that get coupled into that plate voltage. So in this case, here's our noise floor again. If we look at the Heath kit supply, there's a really strong 60 hertz and 120 hertz um, spike in that frequency, which we don't want because that essentially gets injected into our um, plate voltage, which also shows up on our output audio. So the 60 hertz would sound like a hum, and then the 120 hertz would sound more like a buzz. Um, so when we looked at the switch mode power supply before the CLC filter, it's way higher than the Heath kit, and it's essentially, you know, white noise. It's pretty continuous throughout that whole spectrum. And that's what I was hearing when the valve stage was engaged. It was just this constant white noise hiss. And when we add that CLC filter, that's what totally dropped back down to the noise floor. But we also get the benefit of not having the 60 hertz and the 120 hertz spike. We essentially just completely lower that green noise floor there. Um, if I zoom way in on my scope and we look at time scales that are way above the um, audio band, we can get a better idea of what the switch mode power supply is doing. 
So the particular circuit I'm using, it switches at 400 kilohertz. And we can see on this green trace that the dominant spike here is right at, you know, 395 kilohertz. And if we compare that to the Heath kit, um, it doesn't have anything going on, right? If we bring back in the noise floor, it's pretty much the same thing as the noise floor because out at these frequencies, right, we're way past 100 kilohertz and up. Um, we're dealing with just normal RF noise that's in the air. You're not going to hear this in your audio circuit. But what's interesting, though, is with this switching frequency um, on the switch mode supply, we still need to add that CLC filter, even though that's switching at 400 kilohertz and it's way out of the way of audio, because it contributes to all of this noise back down here that's way higher in the audio band that we want to get rid of. And then here's just an even further zoomed out plot where we go all the way up to, to 200 megahertz. So we can compare that the Heath kit really has nothing that linear supply, but the switch mode does have that 400K switching noise there. And it's worse below. So I'll show you guys a, a quick picture of the circuit under test. It's a little messy right now, which some of the noise does contribute to, you know, those trace loops and lengths. You can see on the right the two CLC filters. Um, in this case, I have a separate circuit for each tube. So every channel has two tubes. I'm going to build stereo units, so there's going to be four tubes in total. And each of these power supply boards can individually power each tube. That kind of helps with the current consumption, but it also means that I have four times the components and I need four of those CLC filters. So in this case, I'm just testing a mono channel. Those are the Pi filters that are in circuit. And then I can also test two of the um, unloaded plate supplies that don't have the filter when I do these comparison plots. So hopefully this made sense. Um, I know a lot of people in the audio world get kind of scared about switch mode power supplies, but if you do it right and you've got all the filtering in there, you can actually get better performance than a linear supply um, and you have better rejection of the 60 hertz and 120 hertz from a linear supply. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.